Hi. <laughs> the winter times and Christmas, they are all right around the corner. And usually I am not like super excited. But this year I have decided that I'm gonna turn my room into a little bit of like a wintry, Christmassy, cozy place. because I can cut them down and hang them really nicely from like my window and here above my desk. I think it will look so cute. Glittery snowflakes. I mean, can you see the glitter? I don't think you can. This is gonna be tricky. <laughs> Let me figure this out first and I'll come back with you. <laughs> I don't know why, but this makes me so happy. All these little glittery snowflakes. I mean, look at this. This is just, mm. yes. I think I'm gonna cut these down. This is like the special tape that I have for posters and stuff like that, so I can remove it easily without damaging my walls. because the snowflakes are white, it's difficult to see, but my room feels so cozy. And I have some books to talk about that will bring me in the absolute most wintry, cozy mood. Okay, I think I have like about three books that I might pick up and read during this reading vlog. And one of them I actually already started. And if you tell me that this is not the most wintry, cozy cover that you've ever seen. You are absolutely lying. <laughs> this is a middle grade fantasy, I think. It's called The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. I got this book from Jody from Vanilla Moon here on YouTube, I think about one and a half years ago for my birthday. I just finished a super popular book community book, <laughs> AKA Babel by RF Kuang. Overall, I have good opinions on this book, but I also have some mixed, but I will discuss that in like my fall, what I read during the autumn times video. And how do you recover from that? I think a cozy middle grade might just be the answer that I was looking for. Art loves only three things in life, her mother, her horse, and her sword. So when her mother is taken one cloudless night, accused of witchcraft, Art mounts her horse and chases after her. As she journeys through the wild forests of Scotland and England, she will use her mother's herbal recipe book and natural magic to guide her. Natural magic, nature, witchcraft, it all just sounds so wonderful. The spacing of like the lettering and everything is just so huge. You also have these really beautiful illustrations in between as well. I mean, look at that. That is just the absolute cutest. And it takes place in 1647. So my history facts are not not great. <laughs> so I don't know how the relationship was between Scotland and England at the time, but it might not be the best as well. And women were just being hunted as witches. So I have only read like chapter one until so far, by the way, I'm using the cutest bookmark. My friend Mirta from At Sunflower Winters, who also designed my new channel look, she just released some new Etsy products. This is her like wintry Christmas bookmark. I will leave a link in the description box down below. You should totally check out her shop. So yeah, my current read. And and then the other two books that I really want to pick up are The Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I've never read an Agatha Christie book in my entire life, but this just feels like a classic cozy murder mystery. And I would love to watch the movie of this one as well. If you didn't know what this book is about, just like 
me. It says here, just after midnight, the famous Orient Express is stopped in its tracks by a snowdrift. A passenger lies dead in his compartment, stabbed a dozen times. His locked door from the inside. Isolated by the store and with a killer in their midst, Detective Hercule Poirot of which uh, When you have to switch from French to English, uh, Hercule Poirot. Ah, oh, c'est magnifique. <laughs> must identify the prime suspects from a scornful and impatient array of foreign passengers before the murderer decides to strike again. Isolation, snow, a freaking train. Sounds absolutely wonderful. And then I would also love to pick up Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. Juno Dawson is one of my favorite contemporary authors. This one is definitely leading up towards Christmas. So this is something that I will be picking up a little later because you follow like a family who has just like a ton of secrets that are like being revealed. It's probably gonna be filled full with drama and Juno Dawson writes amazing contemporary stories with some pretty intense subjects. Four sleepless nights until Christmas, three siblings and one big secret. Sign me up for that. I wanna know. I wanna find out. Definitely let me know which books are on your winter Christmas TBR. I never really get into like seasonal reading because my mood just gets like all over the place. But this year, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> morning um i'm gonna do my makeup this is my giant old makeup bag <laughs> and give you my thoughts on murder on the orient express by agatha christie because i finished reading this book last night this was such a quick read especially with the audiobook this one is like 272 pages and the audiobook is only like four and a half hours long when you play it on like 1.5 speed and the audiobook is absolutely fantastic i don't think i'm gonna do my makeup too heavy today because I don't really have to see anyone. <laughs> All that I'm gonna do is take you on my lovely walk with me because it's 100% like a winter wonderland outside right now and I need to get that vitamin D in too. Um, that's not how my blush is gonna <laughs> look in a bit. The audiobook of the Murder on the Orient Express is so amazing. The narrator does all of these different accents like french and german he does everything <laughs> um and it's so amazing it keeps you really engaged and it kind of feels as if you're listening to a theater podcast situation it's so much fun because that is the thing i do feel like this book is very theatrical maybe that's also just like the old writing style which wasn't my fave by the way it felt very matter of the fact you don't know any of the intrinsic thoughts of any of the characters. No strong feelings about that. I also didn't care for any of the characters. Also Hercule Poirot, aka the detective of this story is, I don't know, he's kind of an asshole a bit. <laughs> so I also didn't care for him 
No. <laughs> the vibe of this mystery is a lot of fun because they're like stuck on this train in the snow and it's not a mystery that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Like you have to read the next chapter because the last one ended on such a big cliffhanger. Like no, that's not what this book is. So yeah, basically the story is kind of like split into three parts. So first off you have them all getting on the train, all the passengers and Hercule Poirot and the person who's being murdered has been murdered. <laughs> That's part one. Then you have part two in which Hercule Poirot like questions all of the passengers on the train for their alibis to kind of like see what makes them a possible suspect. And then in the third part of the book, he does his deduction. So he questions some people more. He kind of like looks for irregularities in their interviews that they did. And then you find out what happened. I noticed that I don't have any super, super strong feelings about the book because I just enjoyed my time. It was an enjoyable read. Is it one that will stick with me forever? No. Also, you can definitely tell that this was written in like the 1930s. There are so many passengers on this train that are like not English because like Agatha Christie was English. And you can definitely tell that she talks in a lot of stereotypes regarding nationalities. And that's something that I don't like. I guess it kind of like fits with the time that it was written in, but that doesn't mean that I don't look at that or that that doesn't make me like the story less because it did. I kind of feel like Agatha Christie feels superior about the English people and I don't like that. <laughs> so overall, I think I would give this book like a three to a three and a half. So probably like a 3.25 out of five stars because it was enjoyable. It was quick. I do want to read some more of her other books and give those a go, but I don't think I'll be the biggest Agatha Christie fan. So now I have time to pick up Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. But first, I'm gonna take you on my winter wonderland walk because you don't wanna miss out on this walk. It's beautiful where I live. So stay with me, okay? <laughs> There's a donkey, wait, I don't know if you can see it. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I hope my roommate doesn't mind me filming in her room. And if so, Yannicka, I am so sorry. <laughs> Finished reading Agatha Christie. So I had to start reading Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. One of my favorite authors, honestly, if you haven't read any of her works, especially her contemporaries, you need to give them a go. I still have Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is her first adult fantasy unread on my bookshelves and I, I think I have to give into that in 2023, but I'm kind of scared because what if her fantasy doesn't live up to her contemporaries, you know? But I'm on page 61 and you basically follow three siblings who are going to their parents' house, this huge mansion somewhere around Edinburgh. And last Christmas, something huge happened. You don't know what. And the siblings, like one of them is bringing her new boyfriend. Rowan is taking his best friend with him. And Willow has an eating disorder. She has anorexia. So major, major three, I can't even speak, major trigger warnings. But that is the case for all of Judah Dawson's work. She writes the most extremely raw young adult contemporaries that I've ever read. Maybe even like for adult contemporaries as well. It deals a lot with mental health issues. You have a ton of queer characters as well, but I'm trying to figure out what happened last Christmas and how this will affect this year's Christmas. There's this huge one secret that's probably like gonna spill out. And it's kind of like a story that's being told in time jumps. So you follow the now, AKA Christmas Eve, and then you get also some flashbacks to last Christmas. And that is where I'm at. I am at the first flashback and I am curious to say the least.
couple of months ago, Flexi Spot sent me an email. They emailed me whether I wanted to receive a sitting and standing electronic desk. And I was screaming because I've been wanting a kind of desk like that for so long. They did send the product over to me for free in exchange for like an honest review. And until so far, I am very impressed. It did take some time and effort to put it together. So definitely have someone help you and check whether you're following all the steps correctly. This is how I'm gonna do my work from now on. No, I don't know how high I would have it to be comfortably standing. It did take me a couple of tries for the desk to fully work and operate. But once it did, I was so excited because I always have such like back and neck problems from sitting so much behind my desk for editing and studying for school. So a desk like this would be the perfect solution. I chose a black frame because that fits with my room as well and a bamboo kind of tabletop. Yay! We did it. I did it together with Jenny. Jenny from the black. You can see me in the oh. window. <laughs> <laughs> which looks very pretty it feels super high quality the desk is also quite heavy it is quite an expensive desk but i feel like this will be one that you will take with you for years and years to come so it feels like you will have a really great quality piece of furniture in your home as well a link can be found in the description box down below so you can check out flexi spots electronic sitting and standing desks <laughs> is making all these weird noises and <laughs> i just want to talk about books okay <laughs> i finished reading stay another day by juno dawson exactly on the day of christmas eve which is kind of what this story leads up to and now the sun decides to shine on my face because i'm a ray of sunshine baby <laughs> i finished reading this book it's filled with like a ton of family drama and it all comes together on christmas eve so I could say that maybe some people who will read this book will find it too dramatic. So many things are happening and I want to talk about it, but I also don't want to spoil this plot. Despite all the drama, it still kind of turns up all right at the end. And it's not a picture perfect ending to a story, which I love about Juno Dawson. Life isn't perfect. Not everything turns out the way that you want it to. And that also happens in the story. Relationships kind of like break apart and some stay apart and some come back together. And it feels very much like real life, which I love. So maybe that's a really vague description of what goes on in this book, but Fern, the eldest sister, she's like a perfectionist and she wants everything to go her way or it's just like not really kind of okay in her head. That's kind of her thing that she's dealing with. Then we have Rowan, which is like the middle sibling. He, I feel like struggles a lot with, not his sexuality actually. I feel like he's pretty confident in that, but his commitment issues and kind of like running away from the people that he cares about the most. And then our youngest sister, Willow, she has to deal with her eating disorder. And I feel like especially during the Christmas times, people with eating disorders get really confronted with their eating disorder. And although I cannot speak from personal experience and I don't know about Juno Dawson, but I feel like it was dealt with in a really raw way. And how other characters responded to Willow's eating disorder was not perfect at all as well. It was a classic Juno Dawson and I give this one a four out of five stars. Now the only fiction work that I need to read by her, well, that's not really true, but that I own is Her Majesty's Royal Coven, her like new adult, adult fantasy. Very curious about this one. I just realized I never told you whether I finished, um, what's that middle grade called again? Forest of Moon and Sword and what I thought of it. So I'll quickly summarize my thoughts. I finished that book in a couple of days, but for the way that it was written, that it is a middle grade and that the spacing of the lettering was so huge, it took me way too long to finish because I just, I didn't care. This book is not worth your time, I think, in my opinion. I'm trying to think of like how to phrase why I didn't like it and why I don't think you should read it. It's just very matter of the fact, the writing. The characters are so lackluster and the story in itself as well because it's about like a witch hunt taking place and then like a girl trying to save her mother, but I just couldn't care less. I thought it was gonna be super magical. It wasn't. That's all I have to say about it. Just not amazing. <laughs> So now that 2022 has ended because I'm filming this on January 1st in the evening, what are my plans for next year? I really want to get back into YouTube because of school. I haven't been able to put much time and effort into this and also due to work because I do work at a bookstore in Utrecht, Brusse. It's really quite big. If you ever see me, please come say hi. A couple of you guys have actually said hi to me in the store, which I thought was so nice. So thank you so much to every single one of you who recognizes me and talks to me and it, it means 
means a lot, but I wanna put that down a little bit and also give myself some free time when I need it. I have lots of fun plans for 2023, especially the one that I'm the most excited about is that I'm gonna go to New York City. Oh my gosh, uh, my wallet is crying. <laughs> Together with Brit from Basically Brit and we're gonna meet Lexi, aka Alexandra Roslin here on YouTube. And that's the thing that I'm the most excited about. I'm also pretty excited for my boyfriend coming home because he's been gone on an exchange ever since the end of August and it's been way too freaking long. Tim, you gotta come back. <laughs> and reading wise, I just wanna read whatever I fancy and create more content because I love being here. Also, I'm gonna host, I'm hosting, I still need to make a whole template even though it's the 1st of January, a read along for the truly devious trilogy like this YA murder mystery trilogy by Maureen Johnson together with a couple of other YouTubers which I'm so excited about because it's been so long since I've hosted any kind of read-along and have done live shows and discussions and I think that would be so lovely. So if you want to join in January we will be reading Truly Devious, in February The Vanishing Stairs, and in March we'll be reading The Hand on the Wall. So please join us. I think it will be so much fun to discuss the books together. I really really hope that all of you will have an amazing 2023 May all of your dreams and wishes come true. And if not, know that there will always be a next year ahead. I'm just wishing you the best and I'm so thankful for every single one of you.